And as we did mention, there is some state funding to help, and there's also grant money that's helping to fund the officers. In 2021, the GBI reports 148 babies died because of an unsafe sleep environment. We found 16 babies died in the past year and a half in Richmond County alone. And that's why News 12 is launching a new program, is to help parents help those babies survive. Our Laura Warren is organizing that effort, and she's our guest this morning, one-on-one -on -one with Richard Rogers. And long story short, Laura, you found just having a safe bed in the home is a luxury not every family here can afford. It's something so many of us take for granted. You, you have a baby, you bring them home, you have the diapers, you have the crib, you have everything. But some of these parents we found through talking with AU and really doing research on Richmond County, some of these parents find out they're pregnant a month before they give birth. Some of them don't have money for gas to get to their job. Some of them are deciding between buying formula and buying diapers and a crib just isn't in the budget. So when we were speaking with the coroner, we were pretty shocked at how many babies in Richmond County have died simply because they did not have a safe place to sleep. And when you see the GBI's numbers and you see that 30% of babies who died of SIDS did not have a crib in the home, we can't change every single SIDS death. We know that. But if we can change the preventable ones, the ones that the parents can't afford a safe place for their baby to sleep, then that's something as a community I think we can all get behind. You have a lot of partners in this. AU Health sees this all the time. They deal with high-risk pregnancies. They deal with families living in poverty. What are they telling you about this problem? Well, the problem is pervasive. I mean, it is widespread, and we're a little bit nervous, but not nervous enough not to jump in with both feet. We're a little nervous when we start uncovering the need, how much need there's truly going to be, because we live in an area with a lot of poverty and it's not just Richmond County which has a high poverty rate it's also our surrounding counties Jefferson County a lot of these counties are some of the poorest in the state of Georgia so there is a lot of need there and a lot of these high risk babies AU treats so many from our region they come to one of the best children's hospitals in the mm -hmm. country for care we met a mom who we interviewed she brought her baby home who had spina bifida she didn't have a crib for him she has three other children that baby needs a crib, that baby needs a bed. And it's not that she didn't want to provide for her baby. She's a really loving mother, but she is stretched thin. She does not have the means. Um, so if we can help fill that gap, AU jumped into the project with both feet because they know the need. The, the head of the OB department, Dr. Chad Burn Ray, has been pushing this forward. So we have gotten zero doors closed in our face. All we have gotten is, what can we do? What can we do? This is a huge problem. Uh, let's solve it. They are great partners who've they been are. on the front lines of this for yeah. years. You mentioned the GBI just a second ago. The number is they found about 30% of babies who died of SIDS didn't have the crib in their home. And there are no symptoms or warning signs for, for SIDS. It's just a tragedy that keeps happening over and over. Again. That's right. And with SID, so many of the deaths happen from an unsafe sleep surface, right? Whether that is uh, sleeping on an adult mattress, co-sleeping in the bed with a parent. Um, we found that some parents can't afford a crib or a pack and play, something safe for a baby to sleep on. So they think they're doing right by separating them from the parent, putting them on an adult mattress on the floor. It's too soft. It, it, they suffocate. So there's an education component that goes to this that AU is really honing in on too, but there's also just a resources component. And what was really interesting, this picture behind me, this is a place to dream. This is the family wise current existing program for school aged kids. So they see this need all the time when they go in to provide a bed for a, a grown child who's obviously past the SIDS side, they see babies without cribs. And sometimes they go out and buy those for them. So they're partnering with us to kind of expand this to also include babies. So you mentioned the Family Y, another great partner. What is it that you that you want? What are you trying to do? Okay, so we've had a lot of meetings with our, our partners now, and we've kind of ironed out the best thing we can do to help these families. Um, AU, uh, they have some smaller programs that just don't have enough funding where they give emergency see pack and plays to these families. And we've kind of decided since those are a safe place to sleep and they're more portable, a lot of these families are in transient housing. They are homeless. We are dealing with a huge homeless crisis right now across the entire mm -hmm. area. The, the biggest need we've ever seen in that department. So sometimes these families are going from place to place. So a pack and play is a safe place for their baby to sleep for up to a year um, where they will be able to take it with them. So now, Family Y is collecting pack and plays and 
um, Augusta University will identify the need, the families who truly need this through their social workers, and that's the leg of this that they are really taking on and making sure that they get these pack in place to the families who truly need it. So it's a beautiful partnership where it's kind of coming together, where AU finds the need, people who wouldn't even know to reach out to the Y, they don't have the resources, they don't have the manpower to figure it out. They're trying to keep their newborn baby alive. Yes, you know, indeed. they've got a lot going on. They're yeah. in poverty. They have a lot going on. They are connecting them to the Y. They're, they're filling out paperwork and they are making sure these people get the resource they need. Sounds like we're working smarter here, which is a great thing, and saving lives the in the process. And we are one of the drop-off points. A yes. pack and play is easy to stick in your car. In fact, you could throw four or five in there. That's what we hope you do, yes. And, and we're going to collect them in our own lobby. Yes, and we want them to be new and unused that way, you know, for liability and to make sure that we're giving them a, a safe product that is a new, unused pack and play. But you can get one on Amazon. You can ship it straight to us. You can ship it to the Family Wise headquarters on Clawson Road. Um, you can drop it off here if you're out shopping and you see pack and plays on sale at Costco, pick one up, drop it by here. We one would stop love shopping. to see you. And that has kind of shifted since our initial story, right? Because we decided, everybody involved decided, okay, we could fine tune this thing to death and nitpick it to death and, you know, launch it in a year, or we could just start trying to save babies. So now we've decided we were really pushing for cribs, crib mattresses. We think the need is going to be so big, the manpower that's going to take we decided the pack and plays are the better solution. And sure. we did that through a team of F experts, through Safe Sleep, through AU, through OBs. Um, so now it's a lower cost. We think we're gonna be able to help even more families. These transient families will be able to pack it up and take it with them if they need, if they're staying at grandma's house for a few weeks, whatever. So we're feeling pretty good about the direction and we're feeling good about the community. That's a $60 pack and play is something everybody can find um, in their heart and in their budget. It makes a lot of sense and it sounds like something that actually Augusta can get behind to do anywhere within the sound of my voice. This is for you guys and you'll be giving us updates you promise along the way. Yes, a ton. You'll probably get sick of hearing me. We have some fun fundraisers in the works that we're going to team up. The three groups, AU, the Y, News 12. Um, so we won't release too much of that yet, but hopefully in the fall we'll have some fundraisers so there's money in the bank to just buy hundreds of pack and plays and the goal is in a few years maybe we see those numbers locally start to drop in terms of SIDS deaths because Wouldn't that be great? if we can save one baby, one family from that kind of grief, losing a child that you didn't have to lose because you're just doing the best you can, the baby's sleeping with you, the baby's sleeping on a mattress on the floor, the baby's on a cat, whatever. If we can save one or two of those babies, I mean, take mm -hmm. all of my money. I think we'll I think we'll do even better than yeah. that. <laughs> it's called A Place to Dream. Laura Warren, thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. I feel so special being uh, your interviewee. Here we are, one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> it's finally happened after yeah. all these years. <laughs>